everybody, this is Conrad Ackermont with Agile IT, I'm the CEO here. Um, today on, on the uh, Agile IT Tech Talk, you know, a conversation we love to have every week with our MSP and CSP customers. Uh, you know, we have Kevin Martins again. Uh, Kevin is from Microsoft, he's a cloud solution architect. Uh, Kevin's been a great uh, friend to Agile IT and, and just a great resource and uh, really focused on security and, uh, you know, kind of fresh off of, uh, uh, of Ignite. And uh, one of the things that we see uh, in the marketplace for a lot of the customers that come to us or you know, we're going to get a migration or, or if it's a managed service customer that we have all the time, the topic around phishing, um, it's not a, it's not a, a new topic. It's been around for quite some time, but the attacks are getting very sophisticated. Uh, so one of the great things inside of the, uh, inside of office 365 and, uh, is, is around, uh, is around ATP and Kevin's going to go through that for us and not just, talk about it because we know here in Tech Talk, we like to give an explanation, but really show the demo. Uh, so what I was really excited uh, to hear from Kevin is that we're gonna see it both from the, the, the admin side and the user side, because really that's the big thing, right? Like what is what impacts this gonna have for my users? And is this really gonna protect me? So uh, Kevin, appreciate you taking the time and uh, take it away. Alrighty, hey, thank you, Conrad. I appreciate it, and thanks again for having me on. Uh, so let's let's get to it. Um, let me share out my screen, and just give me a check to make sure you can see that, Conrad, if you don't mind. Yeah, it looks great. All right, yep. there we go. Just a few slides to go through, just to give you some background and give you some numbers on on the types of phishing that we're seeing here at Microsoft uh, across the Office 365 environments, uh, as well as a lot of the other systems that Microsoft has, such as Outlook.com and Hotmail.com. There's a there's a wide variety of email systems out there that we get a lot of telemetry from, and we're we're doing something with that. We're, we're analyzing what's coming in, and we're putting that back into the system to help protect everyone that's both a subscriber in Office 365, as well as the the the, um, the free tools that are out there, the Outlook.com and the Hotmails and so forth that are, are at no charge. Uh, so let's get to it. Um, so when we look at this, when we look at phishing, we, we say phishing is all about identity, right? It's all about taking that username and password, getting, tricking you into providing that, right, for these attackers, right? So th what do they want? Well, they, they want, they want money and they want your data. That, that they, that's what you have once they get in, right? And and the, the, the trick is how to get that. So it, it's a cat and mouse game for all the information that we get in, we analyze, we put mitigations in place. They analyze, okay, what uh, what's not getting through and what is still getting through and let's make that better. It's uh, considered a game of economics, right? Um, the, the, the more they can get through, the more money they can potentially make by taking our data, tricking us into wire uh, transfers and so forth. Um, we are seeing right now about 96% of malware that's coming through, which is an offshoot of phishing, right? We're seeing that being polymorphic. And what that means is that these, the, the pieces of malware coming in, they're changing. They're always changing. So even if something comes in, we identify it as something that's, that's malicious, we take a hash of it, we scan against that, we prevent that, it, you know, we'll catalog that, right? So it won't come through again for everybody, not just your environment. but they know that as well. So they're constantly changing that. Every few minutes, they're changing it and sending it again, sending it again, and so forth, right? So we, we have to keep that in mind that, that there's phishing, there's malware, and so forth. It, again, it's that cat and mouse game. But as a problem that's out there um, that we see quite often is that in enterprises, there's typically, and small businesses, there's typically a lot of different systems in place you know, to, to try to scan, like many, many different scanning locations and so forth. When you start to do that, it, it's you've got a lot of different hops to look through for troubleshooting and it leaves open the potential for something else to come in. You're, you're broadening your attack surface instead of shrinking it, which is really what we all want, right? So top three attacks we're starting to see now are the password spray attacks, right? So when we look at this, we're, we're saying, hey, the, the attack's coming in, um, they're, they're, you know, using a dictionary attack. They're they're hitting, you know, the same password might go to, to my account, might go to Conrad's account and David's account, Sean's account, whoever it may be, and it goes down that list and it hits up on the next word and it goes right through. Remember, they've got all the time in the world to try to guess your password, right? And it only takes once and they're in and they've got you. So make sure you've got those strong passwords out there that also helps out with the phishing attacks and, and trying to make sure that your credentials aren't compromised. So with phishing, um, we, uh, there's about 5 billion emails that the Office 365 system alone has blocked so far in 2018. 
of that, in just August of 2018, we identified there were 44 million risk events. And what do we mean by that? That, that means that, hey, phishing came in, someone clicked on that, number one, and number two, they might have put in their credentials, right? So we might see impossible travel situations by me logging in uh, where I sit in my home office on the East Coast, and maybe an hour later, someone else logging in with those same credentials on the West Coast of the US, right? It's, it's things like that that we don't, that, that we identify as risk events, and you can see the numbers are astounding, right? So then we see also breach uh, replays that, that come into play, you know, people grabbing credentials from the dark web and trying to use those same credentials to get into your account in Office 365 or whatever else, whatever other accounts you have out there. But phishing is, is by far the, the big one that we're seeing a, a problem with, right? Um, so of the phishing, there's one number to call out in this slide here. When a phishing campaign comes through and it lands in your users' inboxes, Within the first five minutes, we, through our telemetry, we see that 20% of those are clicked on. That's pretty concerning, right? 20% of your users will click on that within the first five minutes, right? So it's, it's, you can't be reactive. You've got to be proactive to prevent these from coming in. And you've got to take some education steps as well, okay? But let's look at these, let's look at a few examples just real quick of what these phishing emails will look like, right? So I've got one up here on the screen. This looks really good. Well, they're they're taking the Office 365 branding and they're they're sending something through. Hey, please confirm your password. Looks real to me. You click on the link, they've got your credentials, right? Look at this one. Okay, so say someone's compromised your account and they're looking to compromise even more. Well, they know that maybe you've got a DocuSign, something so you know, you're buying a house or something and, and you're expecting this to come through. This looks very real. You click on it, put in your credentials, they're in. Right. Here we've got another one from Dropbox. I'm sharing a file with somebody. This looks very real as well. Look at the branding behind this. It looks legitimate, all except for the website itself. Notice it's HTTPS. I don't have a cert warning on here. They're getting certs for these now. And then of course, you've got the Office 365 login portal. This looks very real, again, except for the link. And it takes a trained eye to be able to look at these and identify them as they come through to say, hey, wait a minute, there's something fishy, no pun intended, about these emails, right? So we'll stop there and let's get into, um, let's get into uh, the Office 365 advanced threat protection. Area. So there, there's two things right off the bat. There's many things in Office 365 as well as uh, Microsoft Azure that you can do to, to help protect your environment, right? One of those, so the first thing that every Exchange Online person receives is a subscription to uh, the Exchange Online Protection EOP program, right? That is taking everything we know about, about spam and phishing campaigns and malware and so forth coming in. It's everything we know. It's everything that's already been identified we will prevent that from coming in, right? But then there's another category and that's everything we don't know about. And that's the advanced threat protection piece. So we'll, we'll, we'll bring this email in. We might detonate it in sandboxes to make sure there's no malware in there. We might put it through some additional algorithms to, to help identify, hey, is that, is that phishing? Is that a piece of spam? And we might block it from there, right? But there's always that fine line, right? You're, you're always walking a fine line between trying to block these, 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 bad pieces of email coming in, as well as the good ones, right? So you gotta be aware of that. So let me let me click on, um, let me show you how this is set up here real quick. And then I'm gonna to get into a, an actual phishing uh, simulation, right? So this is the technical piece behind this. So I'm, I'm in the Office 365 admin portal, and in particular, I'm in the security and compliance area. I click on threat management, and then I go down here and I click on policy, okay? And I click on the advanced threat protection policy. And right here, you're gonna see that I have two policies that come up. I've got one policy for all users that's set at the lowest level, right? So ATP is enabled for everybody. But you have to realize that there's, there's some priority targets out there. There's, there's targeted spear phishing going on. That is typically aimed at the leadership or anyone in particular with financial approving authority in your organization um, to trick them into doing things like wire fraud, right? So if I get the credentials and it's to someone who can authorize, you know, a, a wire transfer or something like that, wow, I've got the golden nugget right there, right? So what I typically recommend 
is number one, you have a, an ATP policy, you know, number one for all your users. Then you have another one that's assigned here for your leadership team, for those, again, that are more high profile, that have more advanced capabilities within your company. It helps limit the damage that's out there. So I'm gonna click on this one here, right? And you're gonna see, a, 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 I'll call out the difference here. So in here, I've got my, my policy name. Uh, I've just got a brief description. Um, I've got the members who it's assigned to, and this is a this is a fictitious demo, uh, Office 365 tenant here. So everything you see in here looks real, but it's really not, just, just made up names. Um, so just for, for the, the sake of this example here, these five people listed are the executive leadership team for this company, right? So it's applied to them. I've got, and then we go down here to the, the next area. Um, I'm protecting uh, all the domains I own. In this case, it's just one, right? I've got it applied to five people. Uh, what's gonna happen when we identify these messages coming in? Well, I don't want these going to my, my users. I don't, even if it's in their junk email folder, uh, because I don't wanna have them run the, don't wanna run the risk of having them jump, uh, click on something and activate the phishing attack, right? So I just quarantine it. Right? And there is a way within the portal that you can see uh, any of these quarantine messages, because again, you wanna make sure that you're not blocking anything real coming in. Um, so I've also have the option to set up um, uh, safety tips so that if something comes in and we detect that it looks, hey, maybe it could be phishing, but maybe it's not, and we wanna let it go by, we're gonna put a tip up top and say, hey, this may look like it came from someone internally, but really it came from the external side. Right, and it's it's a banner that's up top, uh, for example. You wanna have every every additional bit of intelligence you can add into this to help make the user really think about what they're doing before they do it, the better off you're going to be. Then of course, we've got mailbox intelligence in, in here. Uh, we've got uh, spoofing detection capabilities that's on and what happens to that. This one here is going to the, the junk email fo filter, uh, folder area. And then we've got this one down here, and this is the difference really uh, between the two policies that I've got, a, got set up here for our example. So if I edit this, the advanced phishing thresholds, you know, I've, I've put that up a notch, right, for ATP for my leadership team. Because they are the most heavily targeted, you're gonna find the more well-crafted emails going into this, the, the more more time has been spent for these targeted individuals to try to trick them to giving up their credentials. So we ramp that up just a notch, right? Again, if you if you crank it up, um, you, you just have to watch and make sure you're not capturing anything in quarantine that, that is legitimate company email, right? So let's get out of here. And that's the difference. So you can create multiple, you can create additional policies in here for different teams of people and so forth that you know, really this is gonna depend on what's best for your environment, right? What is the organizational structure? But typically start out with these two. You've got uh, a policy for everyone, then you've got a policy for your leadership team. So let's go in here and let's run, um, so this is the technical side, but you have to realize that Phishing emails, they will get through. Spam emails will get through. That's that's the cat and mouse game, right? So what do you have left at the end of the day? Well, there's a lot of different settings that you can put in place for when that, that phishing does come in, but above all else, it's really, it's user education, right? It's constant user education. This is not a, you know, we're not setting this up and saying, hey, we've reached the finish line. We're, we have to continue to run. You always have to stay ahead of this and, and understand what's going on. This is just a, fake reminder that came up, I'll dismiss that. So what we have built into Office 365 um, is, is what we call the attack simulator. So from here, I'm gonna click on this and I can do multiple things in here. I can create a spear phishing attack, I can do a brute force password attack and a password spray attack. I'm gonna focus here for the next few minutes just on the spear phishing attack, right? These are these are simulations, right? And I can I can really track and see hey, how much of a problem do I have with my user environment not being educated? You know, in, in other words, I'm gonna send this out and try to trick them into clicking on the simulated phishing campaign, and I'm gonna track that, right? So let me, let me design one here real quick. So I'm gonna launch this attack, right? I'm just gonna call it a test demo attack. I'm going to use a template, I don't have to. I can come up and design it however I'd like, but I'm gonna call it a, a payroll update. Right, uh, just from our template, I'll hit next. Right, um, who do I want to uh, who do I want to attack? Well, I'm going to attack Megan, and I'm going to um, attack. Let's see who comes up. 
Oops, there we go. Adam. You could put multiple names in here. Um, we'll just do the three for right now. I'll click on next. All right, there's my subject. Here's what the phishing email will look like. You can look at the HTML, the source code for this, which is HTML in the background. We can click on next. You can edit that text however you like. And then finally, I'm, I'm prompted, hey, do you want to proceed? Well, sure, let's attack our users. I'll click on finish, and the attack is launched. The difference with this tool, as opposed to other tools that are out there, is that this tool is internal to Microsoft. You're, not, you're, you're bypassing our external filters when you do this here. So when we look at this, let's go to Megan's account, which is one of the accounts who I emailed. Right? So when I look at this, and usually uh, it might take a few minutes for it to come through, but there are other campaigns in here that I set up. So here's Megan's account. And you can see an attack that came through. It's asking you to update your account details, your Megan, and so forth. Um, uh, so, it, it, hey, it looks legit to me, right? Something else you can do in here is you can make this even more real. I can I can set up, see this, this SMTP address? It's the full address written out. I can create an alias for this address in my system and have it resolve. So it looks even more real, like it came from the inside. Right, so I'm gonna fall for this. I'm gonna update, I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna update my account details. It's asking me to sign in. Notice the website up here. Oops, get by all of this, right? This is part of the tool. So I'm going to Megan B at M365 X. Sign in here is her. sign in and that's what I get. If this had been a real phishing campaign, I just gave up my username and password, right? So um, this has been forwarded to a, uh, a website that's part of the tool. Uh, when we set up this attack, we could have uh, instead put in here a customized URL. Maybe it's an internal site that you want to set up and run to educate your users, maybe provide them with a link to a few videos or something for additional user education and, and so forth. Um, but this is the this is the phishing attack simulator, right? So you've got the, the technical end, which is the policies in for anti-phishing to set that up. But then you also have to remember there's that human element that you have to keep in mind, that you have to always be sending out uh, attacks like this, right? So when I click back in here to attack simulator, I can go in here and now I can view a report. So let's view the report. And I targeted multiple users, right? One made it in, that was Megan, right? So this, so we do identify the names. We, we, we say, um, uh, hey, the link was, uh, was given. Uh, they clicked on the link. Um, but maybe they stopped, maybe the credential was not supplied. And if that were the case, this would be blank here. Um, but some things to, to keep in mind is that this is not meant to, to out anybody, I'll say. It's just to identify, hey, which users in the environment could use a little bit more education, right? And maybe you can use this list of those who did um, click on the link or supply their credentials uh, even more so, come up with an email directed at them to saying, hey, you know, you clicked on this, this was a simulation please take this additional training within the next couple of weeks and go from there. But like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot more to this um, beyond the exchange online protection, the advanced threat protection, and then of course the user education attack simulator. There's, there's a lot of policies within um, Microsoft Azure and so forth that you can set up to help protect your environment from phishing attacks uh, should they they land in a user's inbox and someone click on that. And that's where um, we have a lot of great partners uh, such as uh, Agile IT that you can uh, certainly get in contact with and they'll, they'll walk you through all those settings and take it from there. So with that, I'll um, open it up for any, any questions. Any